Hello, hope you are doing well. Today I am going to take up lesson 2 from your English textbook for class 11. The title of the book is Hornbill and the title of the lesson is We are not afraid to die if we can all be together. This story is divided into three sections. Section 1 talks about the pleasant journey that they have. Section 2 facing the waves and section 3 searching the island. The story we are not afraid to die if we can all be together is a tale of extreme courage and skill exhibited by Gordon Cook, his family and crewmen in a war with water and waves for survival. Please mark the words war with water and waves for survival. The story begins with the author introducing his family and their passion for sailing. They had dreamt of sailing round the world like Captain James Cook, the famous explorer. And for 16 years, they spent all their leisure time honing their seafaring skills in British waters. So this shows that they were working towards this for many, many years. Their boat, Wave Walker, was 23 meters long and was a 30 ton wooden hull structure. It was built with utmost care and expertise. They had spent months fitting it out and testing it in the roughest weather they could find. So this was the preparation that they were doing to go on a voyage. In July 1976, the narrator, his wife, Mary, son, Jonathan, and daughter, Suzanne, set sail from Plymouth, England to duplicate the round the world voyage made 200 years earlier by Captain James Cook. Two experienced sailors, Larry Vigil, an American, and Herb Siegler, a Swiss, accompanied the family to tackle one of the world's rough as seas, the Southern Indian Ocean. So their voyage was till the Southern Indian Ocean. The first section of the story describes a peaceful journey from Plymouth, England to 3,500 kilometers east of Cape Town, that is in Africa. The narrator is relaxed and full of confidence that they will be able to complete the round the world voyage. However, as the weather deteriorated, the narrator and his companions faced gigantic waves. They took precautions to save themselves and struggled to cope with the disaster. Here, the narration becomes grim, but at the same time, it also exudes Positives such as having a fighting spirit, showing confidence and possessing strong willpower. That is what we learn from their voyage. The narrator and others are able to brave the storm and by the evening of January 6, they sighted Amsterdam Island. The narrator is now relaxed. Joy, relief and complete confidence are apparent in, him, in the narration. The writer mentions the distance and dates to give us a picture of the journey. I would want you to read the chapter on your own. Once this session is over, you can read it. And then you write down the events as per the dates and what happened on those days. This will really help you learn the lesson better. The first part of the journey was about 1,5,000 kilometers up to Cape Town. On 25th December, the writer's ship was in the southern Indian Ocean, 3,500 kilometers to the east of Cape Town. The family celebrated their new year on board the ship despite atrocious weather 
they had a wonderful holiday complete with a Christmas tree. New Year's Day saw no improvement in the weather. They were hoping that the weather would change, but it did change for the worse. Earlier the weather was nice, but now it, it was becoming from bad to worse. At dawn on January 2nd, the waves were gigantic. Unfriendly weather and gigantic waves made them slow their speed, drop, storm jib and take other precautions. Do you know what a storm jib is? It is used in a storm to reduce the sail area to the minimum required for maintaining maneuverability of the vessel. Now let's move ahead with the story. Facing the waves was truly challenging. As the ship tossed up and down, the sailors could see endless, enormous waves rolling towards them. The screaming of the wind and spray was painful to the ears. It was so harsh that they could not tolerate it, but there was no way out. In fact, the danger was so obvious that the sailors completed life raft drills, attached lifelines and life jackets and waited. There was an ominous silence, as if a storm was building up. The kind where you feel like if you even made the slightest sound, it would invite the biggest trouble. So what do you understand by ominous silence? Ominous silence means an unpleasant and threatening silence. It means something bad is going to happen. They were all afraid of the storm. So they had prepared themselves the best they could do. They had put on their life jackets. They had prepared everything for the eventuality. But let us see what happens. Suddenly at 6 p.m. when all became quiet and the wind dropped, the sky immediately grew dark as well. Then came a growling roar. Please notice the words growling roar and an enormous cloud towered at the back of the ship as if it's going to engulf the ship, as if it's going to hit and drop the ship. In seconds, a torrent of green and white water broke over the ship. There was chaos. The author's head smashed into the wheel and he became aware of flying overboard and sinking below the waves. He thought death was approaching and resigned himself to his fate. The author writes, as I was losing consciousness, I felt quite peaceful. What kind of peace? He was losing consciousness. He couldn't hear the storm. That means he was becoming absolutely unaware of the things around him. The ship too nearly capsized, but another gigantic wave hit it, tossing it upright once again. The author was also thrown back onto the deck, his head and ribs smashing against the walls. How painful and terrible that must have been. But he did not lose courage. This story is about courage and survival. In the face of adversity, he was doing his best to save the ship and also to save his family. Here the description is so intense that reader too begins to feel that there is water everywhere and nowhere to escape. In spite of his injuries, the narrator took charge of the situation. Somehow he found the wheel, lined up the stem for the next wave and hung on till his wife Mary appeared and took charge of the wheel. While he was steering the ship, he had begun feeling that water had entered the ship below and that's dangerous. Once the water enters the ship, the ship can sink, it won't sail. Their companions, Larry and Herb, had in the interim started pumping out water frantically. The whole starboard side of the ship bulged inwards. The narrator managed to cover canvas across the gaps to prevent 
more water from entering the ship. So this shows that they were continuously working to save the ship and also to save themselves. It must have been a harrowing experience for them. There was no end to their problems. Then came more problems. Their hand pumps stopped working and electric pumps short-circuited. Fortunately, the narrator found a spare electric pump under the chart room that worked. The entire night was spent in pumping, steering, repairing and sending radio signals. The narrator checked charts and calculated that Ely Amsterdam, a French scientific base, was their only hope. It was bitterly cold and they were getting no replies to their mayday calls, considering what a remote corner of the world they were in. Do you know what a mayday call is? A mayday call is a distress signal used during emergency procedures. It indicates a life-threatening emergency, especially one faced by aviators and mariners. However, firefighters and police forces also use them. How is a mayday call used? Do you know about it? In times of emergency, the call is issued three times in a row. Mayday, mayday, mayday. So that is the protocol they have to follow. Let us recapitulate. What steps were taken by the captain? Now there are two comprehension questions for you. Pay attention. You can go back to your books, underline where you will find the hints and then we will discuss. The first one is to protect the ship when rough weather began. The question is what steps were taken by the captain? And the second one is to check the flooding of the water in the ship. What did he do? We have just now talked about it. Shall I share my answer with you? The first one is in order to protect the ship from rough weather, Captain Gordon Cook decided to slow it down. So he dropped the storm jib and lashed a heavy mooring rope in a loop across the stem. Then his crew and he double fastened everything and went through their life raft drill. They practiced once again that in case of an emergency, how are they going to save themselves? The second one, Larry and Herb, who were experienced sailors, started pumping out water. The captain stretched canvas and secured water roof, hatch covers across the gaping holes. When the two hand pumps got blocked and the electric pump short-circuited, he found another electric pump, connected it to an out pipe and got it started. So I hope this part of the story is clear to you. Let us continue with the story. The whole narration is so powerful, it seems as if we are watching a movie. The kind of sentences, the kind of actions that have been described by the author, we feel as if we are watching a movie, isn't it? Even while reading, we get the same feeling as if we are reading a movie script. Gordon Cook, his family, Larry and Herb, had survived for 15 hours since the wave had hit. Their ship, Wave Walker, was too badly damaged to take them till Australia. That was their plan. They wanted to reach Australia. So, Cook checked the charts once again to see the location, to check their route and calculated that there were two small islands a few hundred kilometers east of where they were, almost like little pinpricks in the vast ocean. Underline the word pinpricks. What is a pinprick? See how beautifully the author has used the figure of speech simile, like little pinpricks used by the author is so apt. It is able to convey 
scale and how tiny the islands were compared to the vastness of the sea surrounding them. One of these islands, Amsterdam, was a French scientific base as we had discussed earlier. But unless the wind and seas abated so that they could hoist sail, the sailors' chances would be slim indeed. The great wave had put their auxiliary, which means supplementary engine, out of action. There was a, an extensive damage to their ship. On January 4, after 36 hours of continuous pumping, that means they were pumping out the water continuously, the ship reached the last few centimeters of water. The crew headed for where the narrator thought the two islands are. His wife Mary found some food and everyone ate their first meal in almost two days. What a relief that must have brought. But their respite was short-lived. This was not the end. At 4 p.m., black clouds began building up behind them. And within the hours, the wind was back to 40 knots. And the seas were getting higher. The weather continued to deteriorate throughout the night. And by dawn on January 5, their situation was again desperate. So that means there was no respite. They were struggling. Therefore, in the beginning, the author says, war with waves and weather. Do you know the difference between a nautical mile and a knot? Because the author has used the word knot. Let us try to understand the difference. A nautical mile measures distance and knot measures speed. A knot is one nautical mile per hour. One knot is equal to 1.15 miles per hour. The term knot dates from the 17th century when sailors measured the speed of their ship by using a device called a common log. There was a procedure that they used to follow. Now, what about their children? As we all know, children are very sensitive. And those children were also sen very sensitive. And seeing the conditions around them, John asked Cook, Daddy, are we going to die? Cook tried to assure him that they could make it. He continued, but Daddy, John went on, we aren't afraid of dying. If we can all be together, you, Mummy, Sue and I. Look at the courage of the children. They were also bearing the bad weather. They were also going through the whole experience. When there was no food for 36 hours, there was no food for these children also. But they were trying to encourage their parents. Cook was rendered speechless. He could find no words with which to respond and left the children's cabin determined to fight the sea with everything he had. Now for the sake of his children, he wanted to fight the sea even more vigorously. That was his determination. And do you know he succeeds? There was positivity, there was optimism all around him and he was able to achieve that. That evening, as the motion of the ship brought more and more water in through the broken planks, the couple, Mary and Cook, both felt that the end was very near because they were experienced sailors. They have been sailing for the past many, many years and they trained themselves for 16 years in rough weather. But here the weather was beyond their control. The waves were gigantic. The waves were enormous. They were still fighting the waves. It was like a war. But Wave Walker rode out the storm, but their ship somehow sailed moved on and by the morning of January 6 with the wind easing now the wind was easing out 
Cook began working on the wind speeds in the ship's chart room. Now he started studying the wind speeds so that he can maneuver the ship to a favorable direction. Finally, the journey has a happy end with the entire crew reaching Amsterdam, that island, a volcanic island where its 28 inhabitants welcomed them. The Cook family and their sailor friends fought the waves with their collective strength and optimism. This is a story of valor, forbearance, faith, optimism and persistence. If we want to do something, if we want to achieve something and we are positive about it, we are optimistic about it and we persist, we will be able to achieve it. The courage of the strong-willed children is especially no noteworthy in the story. It would not be easy to face such grave danger. With this, we have come to the end of the story. I want you to read the story on your own. Read it at your own pace. Divide it into chunks. As I have already told you, that this story is written in three parts. The first part is the happy journey. The second part is their war with waves and bad weather. And the third part is when they are able to find an island and they are safe. So read the story. We will continue with the activities in the next session. Thank you.